my brothers and sisters this week uh, the church has given us the readings from the especially the first readings are all from uh, the letter of uh, hebrews letter to hebrews and uh, in this letter to hebrews it is mainly spoken about priesthood melchizedek priesthood the priesthood of jesus and the temple of god so that is what we are going to reflect in this week therefore i was thinking of starting a series of talk on priesthood and today we will reflect about one aspect of the priesthood because the priesthood is a huge topic and we won't be able to speak it in uh, in a short time so today we will speak one aspect of the priesthood and this coming days the different types of priesthood different aspects of the priesthood because during these days the priesthoods are priesthood is very much attacked not only from the non christians but also from the christians there are so many denominations who deny priesthood there are so many denomination who does who says there is no priesthood in the bible especially in the new testament with the old testament priesthood is gone in the new testament there is no need of priest because jesus celebrated the one son for all one sacrifice then why do we need priest again and again there are so many confusions and wrong teachings which are uh, given by so many denominations therefore it is important for you to learn the truth praise the lord it is very important for us to learn the truth because we are because of, without this truth and we will never know jesus praise the lord uh, hallelujah you know many a time i have noticed whenever we speak something solid theology or the bible's interpretation many people are not happy to listen they want to listen something connected to the, uh, to their daily life and all those things of course we will be speaking about your daily life pr- troubles and everything which we have already done in many times but at the same time it is also good to reflect about the truth the truths about the bible we should know jesus we know every detail of the rituals holy mass and other things and how a church should be well how should be behaved we should behave in the church and all the details i've seen many people even lay people go and uh, teaching and preaching to the parish priest saying you should do this you should do that this is your duty this is your duty this is that duty this duty but we all are experts in knowing all these things but let me tell you one thing do you really know jesus you may have some information about jesus but do you really know the whole truth about jesus which he has written down in the bible we never in, are interested in the solid teachings of the lord so it is good to reflect the solid teachings that bible speaks to us and then we will value the sacraments we will value the priesthood we will value all the valuable things that the church has given us what is the role of pope what is the role of the episcopos episcopos that is bishops what is the role of presbyters presbyters means priest and what is the role of di- di- deacons diacon uh, diaconate the deacons and what is the role of the faithful the people of god so all these is the is these things are biblical is the bible in the bible is the priest mentioned in the new testament so there are so many questions which the protestants ask the catholics and most of the catholics they have they have no clue about it because once in a while at least once in a year at least we should read bible so which we fail to so therefore they are just uh, you know controlling us uh, with wrong teachings and it is so you know, public everywhere so sometimes i search for some answers in the bible to see any catholic answer but for any bible passages i have seen hundreds of explanations interpretations from protestant pastors but hardly we can see some catholic answers so therefore my dear brothers and sisters my dear uh, my dear catholics please listen these teachings very seriously praise the lord and even others too praise the lord uh, hallelujah so in the bible what is the role of priest 
in the beginning in the if you check in the old testament you know we have hierarchy in the church we have pope of course at the top jesus then pope and then bishops and then priest deacons and the people of this hierarchy hierarchical stru- structure in the beginning earlier the hierarchy was like this like the pyramid sh- shade but now the just opposite the top the people of god then goes down like this because the this hierarchy uh, the bishops priests are all at the service of the people of god so that's how many theologians they change this pyramid into opposite so anyway uh, let us uh, reflect about this in the old testament do you see this hierarchy in the previous talks i have explained to all of you that catholic church is the continuation of the jewish religion and everything that is in the old testament is the pre shadow of what is going to happen in the new testament we have already discussed and learned and studied the pre shadows of the new testament which are found in the old testament we have already discussed many times so i don't want to go to those topics again if anybody wants to know please listen and watch the previous episodes the videos that we have published in our, our youtube channel then you will get all those things but the the for example in the old testament there are so many things mentioned that those were all pre shadow we we have found in the previous talks the pre shadows about mother mary rachel is a pre shadow of mother mary rebecca is a pre shadow of mother mary and there are so many pre shadows zion mount zion is a pre shadow of mother mary we have already discussed biblically and also we we have seen abraham and isaac isaac was a pre shadow of jesus even jacob was pre shadow of uh, isa was pre shadow of jesus and even there are so many pre- moses was a pre shadow of jesus there are so many parallelism which we have already seen between moses and jesus which we have discussed many times therefore i would, don't want to go to those details again so there are so many pre shadows mount sinai the covenant that happened on mount sinai is the pre shadow of the covenant that happened in the upper room the last supper and sacrifice on mount sinai there was last or supper and also sacrifice so these are connected so the same way in the beginning among the jewish people israelites before the golden calf you know the people worshiped a golden calf uh, the festival and uh, that they worshiped a golden calf before that all the israelites were considered as priest they were all priest they have priestly kingdom all the israelites were priest before the sacrifice of the golden calf after they sacrificed in front of the golden calf god was so angry god defrocked all these priests all these priests lost their priesthood and then lost their priesthood means the both originally they both of them these all the israelites had these two priesthood ministerial pre, ministerial priesthood and priesthood of uh, ordinary the uh, the royal priesthood both was with them but after the sacrifice in front of the golden calf god took away this ministerial priesthood from all of them and restricted only to the levites especially the sons of aaron we see these bible passages let us read first god calls all of them as priest we read exodus chapter 19 verse 6 exodus chapter 19 verse 6 we read like this but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation these are the words that you shall speak to your so the lord says in the bible god calls all of them by priest but later we can see um, after the golden calf uh, sacrifice and everything god t- took away this kingship uh, sorry the pro- priesthood from all of them and gave it to a certain people certain people means the sons of levi and even among them all of them are priests uh, the sons of levi but sons of aaron were given the chance to go and serve at the altar let us read numbers chapter 3 verse 2 and 3 
numbers 3 2 and 3 these are the names of the sons of aaron nadab the first born abihu eleazar and ithamar Let's, these are the names of the sons of aaron okay continue okay and all the uh, sons of aaron the anointed priest whom he ordained to minister as priest so now not all of them are priest only some of them are priest to minister as priest so only some of them were appointed to minister as priest so in the old testament you can see two types of priesthood one is all the people are priest royal priest but out of them some of them are selected as ministerial priest let's again read verse 10 verse, verse 10 verse 10 but you shall make a register of Aaron and his descendants it is they who shall attend to the priesthood only Aaron and their sons should be the priest and any outsider who comes near shall be put to death that means they should be avoided they should be completely cut off no other people are allowed to touch the holy ones, holy things. Only this appointed priesthood, the ministerial priesthood, which God has appointed, they are the sons and descendants of Aaron. Only they should do the service of the priesthood. Remember, earlier everyone should do. That is why when Israelites were saved from Exodus, Egypt, in every house, they sacrificed the lamp. And the head of the family was the one who was presiding over the first Passover. The first Passover was celebrated not in the temple. Not in any church. Not by any priest. But every house head of the family was the presiding over the presbyter. The one who is presiding over and who was the one who cut the, cut the lamb and the sacrificed the lamb and ate. Therefore, everyone was priest. But because they sacrificed in front of the calf, the golden calf, God was so angry, removed the ministerial priesthood from all of them and gave it only to the priests, the Levite priests, because Levite priests, they were, they stu stood for God, stood for God. Therefore, he gave the priesthood only for the Levite priest and selected the sons of Aaron to serve at the altar and told others don't ever come closer to the holy ones holy things the others were not permitted to come closer to the altar and that's how we read in the old testament the same thing jesus also starts in the new testament because we know the new testament is the continuation of the old testament let us read another passage numbers chapter 1 verse 48 onwards numbers chapter 1 verse 48 onwards the lord's heart said to moses only the tribe of levi you shall not enroll and you shall not take a census of them with the other israelites continue verse 50 because rather you shall appoint the levites over the tabernacle of the covenant and over all its equipment and over all that belongs to the, it, they are to carry the tabernacle and all its equipment and they shall tend it and shall camp around the tabernacle. Everything of the tabernacle, all the equipment that is belonging to the Lord, the holy things should be carried by only the Levites. Verse 51. When the tabernacle is set out, the Levi shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levi shall set it up. And any outsider who comes near shall be put to death. What does it mean? No one else should be coming closer to the holy ones. Even today, this is the same thing that is continued in the Catholic Church. My dear brothers and sisters, verse 52. Let's read 52. The other Israel shall camp in their respective regimental camps by companies. But the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the covenant that there may be no wrath on the congregation of the Israelites and the Levites shall perform the guard duty of the tabernacle of the covenant. That means the priests are supposed to surround the tabernacle. Therefore, if they don't do that, in case if and someone else come closer to the holy, holy things, then there will be wrath of God upon the congregation. Therefore, it is the duty of the priest to preserve the holy things of tabernacle. Remember, it is, this is in the Old Testament. 
Remember, the New Testament is the continuation of the Old Testament. Let us read Numbers chapter 16 verse 40. Numbers 16 40. We read a reminder to the Israelites that no outsider who is not of the descendants of Aaron shall approach to offer incense before the Lord. No outsiders, only the descendants of Aaron should be there celebrating anything that is connected to sacrifice. Okay, I hope you understood about this. Now, we see the connection here in the New Testament. In the New Testament, all the Christians are priests. All the Christians who baptized are priests. We all have priesthood. Just like all the Israelites are priests in the Old Testament, we are also priests. We read 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, we read like this. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. The same word which God already spoke to the Israelites, he's already spoken here. You know, in the Old Testament, God said, Exodus 19, 6, God said, you are my holy nation, your priestly kingdom. In the New Testament, the word of God says to the new Israel, your holy nation, royal priesthood. The same thing is continued. There are many things which are continued in the New Testament. I'll give you some more example. In the Old Testament, we read Moses. Chosen one of God, anointed one. In the New Testament, the real Moses, that is Jesus. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus is called anointed one. And after Moses, just below Moses, who is that? The leader of the high priest. Who is the high priest? Or the leader of the priest? Aaron. Aaron. And just be below Aaron, we have three people. Aaron, Abihu, Nadab. These are the close one of the uh, Moses. Abihu and Nadab are the children of uh, Aaron. So there are three people. In the New Testament, top Jesus. Then Jesus made Peter as the leader of all the disciples. And just below Peter, there are three people. Peter, John, James. Just like in the Old Testament, Aaron, Abihu, Nadab. Because you see in the Old Testament, anytime when Moses goes up, three people used to follow Moses. Abihu, Aram, Aaron, Abihu, Nadab. These are the three people who used to follow Moses every time, most of the time when Moses goes up to meet God. In the New Testament, every time when God, Jesus goes up to the mountain, Jesus used to take three people. Peter, John, James on Mount Tabor, Gethsemane and other places. So these connections you can see. Just below Aaron, Abihu, Nadab, you can see 12 people which Moses selected. Moses selected 12 leaders of the 12 tribes. That is just below these people. And then again below them, you can see Moses select 70 elders. 70 elders were selected by Moses. So that is likewise you can see a hierarchy there. And in the New Testament, you can see another hierarchy. Jesus, below Peter, the leader of all the apostles. And below that, Peter, John, James, three of them. And below them, 12 apostles. And below them, Jesus selected 70 elders. Where is it all written? Let us read it from the Bible. First, we read Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter uh, 6. Okay, we know that Jesus selected 12 disciples. But there is also one more thing. Let us read in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 18, verse 24. Exodus 18, 24. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Continue. Moses chose able men from all Israel and appointed them as heads over the people, as officers and over thousands and hundreds and fifties and tens. So Moses selected 
the heads of their 12 12 tribes appointed them and also he selected 70 elders we read numbers chapter 11 verse 16 numbers chapter 11 verse 16 we read like this so the lord said to moses gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you so God is appointing 70 people and there is also anointing of the Holy Spirit is taking place upon these 70 people this is in fact is the ordination of the elders we read verse 20 25 let us read verse 25 then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders and when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied but they did not do so again but they all prophesied because the Holy Spirit came upon these 70 elders and these 70 elders are the pre-shadow of the New Testament priesthood. In the New Testament, you can see 70 elders again. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. So, these are, that is why there is a connection here. In the previous word we heard, Exodus chapter 18 verse 25. Exodus 18 25, let us read once again. When God, Moses selected these elders and priests, elders and the leaders of the 12 tribes, Moses chose able men from all Israel and appointed them as heads over the people, as officers over thousands, hundreds and fifties and tens. Small, small group, like a small parish and diocese. Hundreds and thousands of people and there is a head. In the New Testament, you can read Mark chapter 6 verse 40. When Jesus was multiplying five loaves of bread for 5,000 people, what did Jesus say? So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Jesus told them, everybody sit in groups. Verse 39 read. Verse 39. So then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups. Jesus told them, everybody sit down in groups. In fact, Jesus need not ask them to sit in groups. Let everybody come in one line, I will distribute. He could have said that. But he told them to sit in groups. What kind of groups? Groups of fifties and hundreds. Hundreds and fifties. Why this is mentioned hundreds and fifties? Because in the Old Testament, Moses appointed the elders to be in charge of hundreds and thousands and fifties and tens. In order to remind it, it is written like this. And then what did Moses do? Moses told all the elders in the Old Testament to go and take care of all these people. In the New Testament, what did Jesus do? 41. 41 we read. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed them, broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples. He did not give directly to the people. He did not call random people from the crowd and say, come and collect it and give it to everyone. No. He gave these bread to the disciples and the disciples and distributed Disciples means not only the apostles, but also the 70 disciples. <coughs> Sorry. Praise the Lord. A hallelujah. So this is a clear sign of the authority. That just like today we have parishes. It is the parish priest who distribute the heavenly bread to each and every one of you. That is already depicted in this, in this message. Praise the Lord. A hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. A hallelujah and also we read the elders were chosen in the Bible that is gospel of Luke chapter 10 verse 1 let's read Luke chapter 10 verse 1 we read after this the Lord appointed 70 others 70 others means we are Jesus has already 12 apostles there is a difference between apostle and disciple apostle means only 12 of them Disciples means those elders. I mean, the, the, among the disciples, there are specially chosen elders. These are 70 people are called the elders. Word elder in Hebrew word 
sorry the greek word because the new testament is written in greek language the word elder in greek is used presbyter presbyter elder means presbyter so in latin also it is presbyter and greek also presbyteros so presbyteros so what does it mean presbyter means in the new testament in english we call priest in greek it is called presbyter that is why the place where the priest stays is called presbytery you have your parish presbytery and this presbytery is coming from the place where the priest stays so if you search in the new testament is there any priest mentioned you may not see because the word that is used in the bible in greek for the priest is presbyter from this word in english we call priest praise the lord so that is why we have presbyteries and presbyter the priests are called officially called presbyter praise the lord hallelujah so we can see so many passages in the bible let us read some passages acts of the apostle chapter 11 verse 20 30 acts of the apostle chapter 11 verse 30 let us read this this they did sending it to the elders they sent some people to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Elders means presbyters, means priest. Let us read uh, James chapter 5 verse 14. James chapter 5 14. Are any among you sick? If anybody is sick, they should call for the elders. What does it mean? The real meaning is they should call for the priest of the church. And have them pray over them. That means even in the New Testament, there are priests who are given the authority. New Testament in the Bible, the priests are given the authority to pray over the sick and pray for them. Anoint them with the oil. This is the anointing of the oil of the sick. Anointing of the sick. The sixth the sacrament. So, or the seventh sacrament. As, okay, sixth class sacrament. So are many among you, any among you sick, they should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. The elders are called and appointed. That means if you take the Greek language, the presbyters are called and anointed to anoint the sick people with the oil and anoint and pray for them, the sick people. Verse 15. Verse 15, continue. The prayer of the faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. See, when the presbyter and pray over and absolve the sins, sins will be forgiven. When a presbyter come and pray over the sick, sickness will be healed. So anyone among you is sick, call the elder. Bible says very clearly, the elder means presbyter. Since the word elder is used there, many people do not know it is meant for priest. Praise the Lord. That is because the translation. If you take the original language that is Greek, it is presbyter. Even today, the priest in the church, the official language of the church, in the church, the priests are called presbyters. Praise the Lord. A hallelujah. Let us read. Let us read another passage. Acts of the Apostle chapter 15 verse 2. Acts of the Apostle chapter 15 verse 2. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension, debate with them. There was a debate. Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. There are two types of people. Apostles. They are the bishops. The elders, priest, and there is also mention about the deacons. So you can see these three groups already in the New Testament. So any kind of discussion with the spiritual aspects, they have to discuss not only with the apostles, but also with the elders, the presbyters. Because the presbyters had the role in every discussion of the spirituality, the early Christianity. Verse 4, verse 4. 
so they were sent on their way by the church and as they passed through both phoenicia and samaria they reported the conversion of the gentiles and brought a great joy to all the believers was for when they came to jerusalem they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders church people of god faithful people the apostles and the elders they reported all that god had done with them praise the lord and again let us read chapter 15 verse 6 chapter 15 verse 6 the apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter remember every discussion it is not only among the apostles but also among the elders the presbyters you can see so many so many messages like these praise the lord Uh, acts of the apostle chapter 20 verse 17 let us read acts of the apostle tw- 20 verse 17 from miletus he sent a message to ephesus asking the elders of the church to meet him verse 28 that means wherever saint paul went he appointed and anointed some presbyters that is why in the bible we see saint paul told titus and timothy i have given you my laying on of hands i have given you holy spirit please rekindle it every time that is called ordination ceremony keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the holy spirit has made you overseers see first he called acts of the apostle chapter 20 verse 17 we read saint paul called all the priest from miletus he sent a message to ephesus asking all the elders of the church to come that means all the priests were gathered in miletus from miletus so he sent a message all the priests to come together all the presbyters to come together and then paul told the priest what did he say was 28 was 28 keep watch over yourselves all the priest keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the holy spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of god that he obtained with the blood of his own son saint paul is telling the priest take care of all these people these are the people which god obtained with the blood of his own son he up he asked the priest to, to take care of the flock my dear brothers and sisters praise the lord titus is a bishop titus is a bishop of crete crete so uh, Ch- titus chapter 1 verse 5 saint paul told the bishop of crete that is titus and said like this chapter 1 verse why i left you behind in crete for this reason so that you should put in order that remain to be done and should appoint elders in every town as i directed you what does it mean go as a bishop you i appoint you and i have told you to go to every town and appoint bis- priest presbyters elders means presbyters appoint priest in every town so that they will take care of all the sacramental need of the people these are the desire that is why in the old testament just like moses selected elders 70 of them just like new testament jesus himself selected 70 elders and the apostles continued selecting more elders because number increasing and that is why in the catechism of the catholic church 1541 we read like this 1541 we read like this catechism of the catholic church and chapter i uh, mean paragraph number 1541 we read like this and there the church itself says the comparison between the old testament elders and new testament priesthood the liturgy of the church however sees in the priesthood of Aaron and the service of the levite as is in the institution of the 70 elders a prefiguring of the ordained ministry of the new covenant the 70 elders and anointing of the holy spirit upon them is the prefiguration of the ordination of the priesthood in the new testament thus in the latin rite the church prays in the consecratory preface of the ordination of the bishops there are so many prayers mentioned there okay now my dear brothers and sisters today as we are having a series of talks about priesthood today we just looked at the hierarchy of the church 
hierarchy of the old testament and new testament whether these priesthood is mentioned in the new testament and the role of the priest is it mentioned in the new testament and all these things we just check today tomorrow and other days we will see go deep into the different aspects of which are written in the bible about the priesthood then you will value the priesthood and honor the priesthood and see and honor even the bible and see the differences and the hidden secrets of the word of god will be given to you therefore my dear brothers and sisters always start praying for the priest especially on this day as we start reflecting about the priesthood pray so that we may have more and more priests appointed in different places let all the appointed priests be able to take care of the people of god whom god has appointed and entrusted to them let us pray for this intention